I want to read something and then share something that he's, uh, I want to read two verses, I believe, from the scriptures, and then I share with you what God has uh, has been, you know, sharing with me, teaching me. Uh, when we look at the book of Psalm, Psalm 100, this is something we say, come into his presence with thanksgiving. You know, let's let's look at it together, please. Psalm, Psalm, the book of Psalm 100. Book of Psalm 100. Uh, when you look at the book of Psalm 100, you're going to see where we are enjoined, believers are enjoined, how to uh, encourage or uh, instructed on how to approach God. He says, shout praises to God. I'm reading from the Common English Translation so that everybody can understand. I usually use a different translation, the King James Version, which is kind of old school English for uh, uh, for some people. It's, it's, I'm reading the Common English Translation. It says, shout praises to the Lord, everyone on the earth. Be joyful and sing as you come to worship the Lord. You know that the Lord is great. He created us. We belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Be thankful and praise the Lord as you enter his temple. Be thankful and praise the Lord as you enter his temple. The Lord is good. His love and faithfulness will last forever. All right? Uh, praising God and ex exalting God is something that believers do. We do that, and we are encouraged to do that. Now, let me, um, how do I put it now? I, I want to, I, I'm not going to, I want us to re-examine that deeply. What is our motivation for praising God? Sometimes the wrong motive can ruin a beautiful offering. Whenever we offer something to God, we are not giving something to him. So he, it shouldn't be like we're giving something to him or offering him something so that he can do something in return for us. God is not a, what you call that machine, where slot machine, where you slot in $2 and you get eight. No, he's not like that. Remember, without a heartfelt humility or without the heartfelt um, sincerity and total submission to God, your worship or praise or exhortation or whatever you do will not be acceptable. Remember, God does not need you to be God. He doesn't need your faith to be God. He has been God before you came in the sin. He will remain God forever. He is a, a, a forever God, not a yesterday or, you know, fly by night kind of God. He's been the living God ever since. He created everything. He created humanity. He initiated you. He brought you into existence. He conceived you in his mind and birthed you by his own will. So when he say, come into the scripture, say, come into his presence with thanksgiving, enter his gates with praise. It's, n it's not suggesting to you. And when he say come into his presence, many of us limited to when we get to places of our meetings, churches and Bible studies and whatever, or prayer meetings where we gather together with others and then we say we are now in the presence of God. No, the whole earth is his palace. <laughs> ah, hallelujah. The whole earth is his. And wherever you are, he's there. So in other words, what, he, what the scripture is saying indirectly is wherever you are, praise God. Wherever you are is where you are his temple. So in your life, praise and worship should be your culture, your constant state, your unchanging state of mind, your un, uh, unwavering expression of your own character. You are praise expressed to God. You are adoration ascending to the Lord. You are gratitude manifesting to God, toward God. You are the temple of the living God. In you must always be joy and praise and thanksgiving and deep appreciation and thorough high quality worship in your thoughts, in your heart, in your words. 
you don't necessarily have to sing, but if you can sing, please go ahead. Some people say, well, I don't have a good voice. God, there's no scripture here that says those who have a good voice should praise the Lord. He said, enter his courts with praise. Come into, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Come into his courts with praise. Why are you thankful? Someone said, well, God hasn't done anything. Or the, my prayer request has not been answered, so I don't have anything to be thankful for. You, you don't understand uh, uh, the fact that you are alive is a privilege. It's a gift. The fact that you are actually, you could, God could make, make you a tree, into a tree. You could have, instead of making you a human being, you could have been made a tree. And you, do, you wouldn't have a question to ask him. It could make you into a stone. The fact that he's your God, what a privilege to have him as our God. Have you ever thought about that? You are focused on that tiny thing that you want him to do that he hasn't done yet. And then you said, I don't have anything to be thankful for. Many of us are full, are so selfish and full of ourselves that we don't, we, we are not even aware of something, the great things that God is doing in other people's lives. Even in the world of insects and animals. Even in just nature, your ability, your the grace of God that brought you up from bed this morning, the grace of God that has sustained you to the point where you are hearing my voice yeah, over this platform, it's enough for you to be grateful. The fact that you have a father in heaven who will spare nothing to reach you, to help you, to uphold you, to sustain you. Come on now. We owe him. You owe him. Hallelujah. You owe him. And I want you to change your attitude from grumbling, from complaining, from waiting to, be, to, to constantly praising him, adoring him, magnifying him. Now, can, can I talk about exaltation? You know, for those of us who, you know, we go to churches where good music is played and the and the worship is good and all that, whether you use a video, someone's song, or you do the song yourself, uh, we, we say, okay, this is a, let us exalt the Lord. And then people raise their hands and then they begin to praise the Lord, either in tongues or in their own language and, you know, and, and just do it. Exalting God it is not only when we come together. And by the way, exalting God is not saying, Lord, I exalt you. Lord, I exalt you. You don't exalt God that way. No, that's not the way to exalt you, to exalt God. Exalting God. Let me tell you something. He is high and lifted up already before you were created. He fills the heavens. There is no space anywhere that God does not feel. So where are you exalting him? When you say you magnify God, where are you magnifying him into that he has not already been? To magnify God actually means the clamor for attention in your heart and mind, all the things demanding your attention that are you know, bombarding you, you know, you, your focus, your constant focus on the greatness of God and the, on the mercy of God, on the nature and the character, the infallibleness of God is above all the things that have the pot potency, the, the, you know, to the ability to scare you, to make you fearful, to make you complain, to make you worry, to get you anxious and, you know, and toss you, shift you, move you, kick you, knock you over. In spite of all that, you zero in on the Lord and you holding his word. You are seeing his, his character. You are looking at his face full of compassion, full of mercy. Oh, hallelujah, full of love for you, overflowing with everlasting mercy toward you. This is what he is. This is who he is. This is what his word says. That When you focus on that in spite of all, you are magnifying him. In other words, you have lifted him in your view, in your perception, in your thoughts, in your mind, in your heart, above everything else that you may be going through, above everything else you may be experiencing, above everything else you may have heard, above everything else that you must have seen. The, the three boys, uh, uh, what are their names? 
Me Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they magnify the Lord in the face of wildfire, in the face of a, a heavy fire, all right? A furnace that was burning, that was increased seven times. The fire actually consumed those who threw them in. That was how strong it is. Yet they magnified God in the face of the fire. Daniel magnified God in the face of the lions. Uh, Joseph magnified God in in the in the middle, or you know, held in chains. The, Paul and Silas magnified God in the in the uh, midnight. They held on to their uh, understanding of God according to His Word, and God showed up to magnify God means to enlarge God in your heart and mind above every other thought, worry, or over every other thing that has the ability or the potency to overcome you. you. You refuse to let go. There's pain, you refuse to let go. There's fear, you refuse to let go. You're holding on to the word of God. You're face to face with your heavenly father, refusing to bulge, refusing to, 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 to be shaken, refusing to be discouraged, refusing to, to lose your faith, refusing to confess something negative, but to hold on to God. That is what magnifying God is. That is what exalting God. The word exalt is from a root word that says to lift up, to lift up and then push forward, to lift up and bring forward. That is what the root word of the word. In other words, you lifted God up in your mind, in, all, in spite of all you are going through and all that is happening. You lift God up above all the demands on you and all the traffic going on in your life and all the mess. You lift God up above them and then you project God higher than any of those things that the devil is trying to use to drown you. That is what magnifying God is. It's not to say, oh, I magnify you. Ra -pa 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 -pa. I magnify. I'm not saying speaking in tongues is bad. I speak in tongues too. But let us continue to magnify God. I I'm going to read something here that 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 really uh, come with me to the book of Psalm, Psalm 69. Psalm 69. This is this is powerful. Psalm 69, the book of Psalm, chapter 69. Let's look at it here. Uh, I think it's verse, let me see. Psalm 69. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is beautiful. When I when I found 69, let's look at verse 31. All right. Let's look at Psalm 69, verse 31. This is very powerful. When I looked at it and I said, Oh my God, this is this is this is this is something else that I need to practice. This is something I need to do more of. Look at what he says in verse uh Psalm 69, verse 31. Why am I not there? Let me open. Maybe I flipped to the wrong place. Give me a second. Psalm 69, verse. Good. All right, 31. It says, let's look at, before we look at 31, let's look at it from verse 30. I will praise the Lord with a song. Okay, so he's not saying I will sing to the Lord in praises. I will praise, I mean, it will mean the same thing anyway, but he says, I will praise the Lord with the song. So I have praise in my heart to give to the Lord, but I'm going to wrap up that praise in a song, in melody. That's what he's saying, okay? I will praise the Lord with the song, okay? And, and a thankful heart. And a thankful heart. Or I will magnify him with thanksgiving, according to the King James Version. All right. These will please the Lord better than an offering, better than offering an ox or a full grown bull. You understand what I'm saying? This is what the some 30, some 30, uh, 69, verse 30 says. I will praise the Lord with a song. So it is not the music that is actually the praise. It is what the music is saying that is the praise. It, music is a medium through which praise is expressed. And can I tell you something? The Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. So he says here, I will praise the Lord with a song 
and a thankful heart. So the song must be from a source that is full of thanksgiving. Your heart must be full of thanksgiving, either for the things you have heard him do, God do for somebody else or in other places, or just the remembrance of his word, his promises to you, or just the knowledge, your personal knowledge and experience with God is enough to produce, uh, a, a, to give you, a, a, you know, form gratitude in your heart with which to come and now to say, Lord, I thank you for you took my sickness and you forgave my sin and you promised me long life. You are declaring what his word has said to you. So you are thanking him. He said, these will please the Lord better than offering an ox or a full grown bull. Now, so many people say, well, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to send in money. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. That is good. Paying tight, give offering, pledges, donations, whatever you do to the Lord. Thank you for all that you do. You know, God will reward you. Is that that is what His Word promised, and you know He's faithful. But much more than that, there's something else you can do for the Lord that we actually please Him more than that. That is what David is saying. David is saying, if I brought in a live cow or a, an animal, fully mature animal, and slaughter it to sacrifice it to the Lord. It will not even, he wouldn't enjoy it as much as hearing me from my heart, thanking him and praising him with the song. And David was good at it. You know the Bible, right? The Bible story. David was, he would dance so freely and express himself and magnify the Lord and exalt his name and prophesy and dance. And oh my goodness, David knew how to praise the Lord. Those who know how to praise the Lord, the, God gives them access to come closer to him and God reveals himself more to them. Okay. If you have not started it, I'd like to encourage you to do that. All right. He said, but the praises, the thanksgiving, the gratitude expressed from the heart is more pleasing to the Lord than anything else. So in other words, he's not saying you should quit supporting financially or whatever you do physically to serve the Lord. He didn't say you should quit, but he says, beyond that, go to the higher level where you are full of gratitude, full of praise, and keep thanking the Lord. Amen? Keep thanking the Lord. Today, I'd like to encourage you, learn to magnify God. Learn to exalt God. Learn to praise Him in all things. Give the Lord praise in all things. Anxiety may come. Shake it off and say, no, I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm not going to waste my energy being anxious. I'm going to rather praise the Lord. I will turn my energy, uh, it, the one I was supposed to waste in, in uh, murmuring and complaining and being anxious and fretting. I will turn it into praise. I will turn it into a new song. I will turn that energy into a dance. I will turn that energy into reciting the goodness of God. Now, recite what God has done for you, what God has done in your family, what God has done for somebody else. Say, ask him, Lord, you mean you did that? You did that for me? You did that? I remember you did this. I remember you did that. And when you sit together as a family, these are the things you mention. Let your children, let your younger ones, let other friends know what God has done for you. That is what the Bible says in the book of Psalm 145. You say, praise him, magnify him. Tell his goodness to the next generation. Hallelujah. I encourage you to learn to magnify God. Remember, magnifying God is not lifting God higher than the heavens. Okay? Magnifying God means lifting God within your heart higher than every other thought, every other thing that is, that is trying to take over your mind. Over the fears, over the anxiety, over the worries, over the, the onslaught of wickedness, over anything. Just keep focusing on the Lord. Keep reciting his faithfulness, his words. Keep praising him in spite of all constantly driving in the office, in your washroom, in your kitchen, at home, on the farm, wherever you are, whatever you do, whenever you are awake. Let the living praise the Lord. This is what magnifying the Lord is. 
stay on his word, keep reciting his word. And you are going to see that the more you do that, the more you're going to enjoy the presence of God, the more the peace of God is going to uh, saturate your life. Now, if you want to join us for fellowship, uh, if you are in the U.S., let us know. We will send you, uh, 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 connect you with our, our group there. If you are in Canada, you could join us at uh, Milton City Church in Ontario, Canada. Uh, and uh, our email address is to get more information, you could you could also email us info at newworldministries.net. Our service time is 1030 every Sunday. And as you come, you're going to experience miracles. You're going to have a song to sing back home. You are going to be enjoying the life of God the way we've been doing it. God has been working so much among us and through us. There is no meeting of ours, even Bible studies that we do not experience healings. There's always a testimony, something good that God has done in answer to prayers and to show his love and compassion toward us. And we want to invite you to be part of our group. May the Lord bless you and keep you and looking forward to seeing you. If you have questions, please send us an email too. Let we can help you answer. If you, if you need us to connect you with a good church, that is not, if you are not close to us and you're somewhere else, we can help you connect with a good church. Our email address again is info at newworldministries.net. Our phone number is 647-863-1000 for Canada, 470-592-1000 for the U.S. The Lord bless you. And until I come your way again, I'm Pastor Jerry Samuel.